So now we already formed our basic equation of the pressure field, okay? And now, like I said, we're going to use these equations to tackle certain liquids, okay? And one of them would be a fluid at rest or a liquid at rest. Pressure variation of the fluids at rest, okay? Now, if you've just finished your high school physics, you, you can already tell me the answer. That as we move from this point, the pressure from this point to this point, the pressure increases, okay? And that pressure is given by the height multiplied by the weight of, of multiplied by the weight of the liquid, okay? However, you know, here we want to really take, take a, a more bigger approach. We want to really change our thinking into a more uh, university approach to really handle um, the, a general case, okay, and also really have that mathematical rigor. That's what I'm always looking for, that mathematical rigor in proving certain concepts, be it physics or maths, and that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, so what was our basic equation that we started out with? The del operator on the pressure, subtract, subtract the del operator on pressure, subtract by the specific weights multiplied by K, the K component because the weight goes down in the K component is equals to mass times the acceleration. Okay, this is our basic equation. So we can use this equation to handle a lot of fluids, a different type of fluids, but we are concerned with fluids at rest. What do we know about fluids at rest? Well, the acceleration is equal to zero. Okay, acceleration equals to zero can also mean constant velocity, but let's just take it as acceleration equals to zero means fluids at rest. So this equation now already becomes, we let this equals to zero, bring this to the other side, the del operator on P or the gradient of P plus the specific weight in the K component is equal to zero, right? Okay, well, that is good so far. So now what is the gradient of P? Now we implement the del operator on the pressure, we will get equals partial P partial X I plus partial P partial Y J plus partial P partial Z K, right? Equals to, yeah, this is the the pressure, the gradient of the pressure, okay? And then this plus with, okay, the, the specific weight in the K component is equal to zero. Okay, so now if we look at this equation and we do some rearranging, what's the rearranging that we're gonna do? We are basically gonna bring this to the other side and equate the IJK components, you know, equating simple vectors. This is what we get. Partial P, partial X equals to zero. Partial P, partial Y equals to zero. And partial P, partial z is equal to negative specific weights. Okay, now, did you see something from these results? Well, what does this result tell us? This results tell us that the change in pressure in the x direction, so if this is the fluid that we have, okay, y and x, x, x and y forms a certain plane, right? Okay, the change in the pressure in the x direction is there's no change regardless of what direction that we go. Well, you probably already expected that because you know you have learned that as we move along the surface, there is no change in pressure. Well, it's good now because now we got we have used some calculus and we have used mathematics to show that, which is what I like. Okay, change in pressure in the y direction same. It's also zero. You move in the y direction in the same plane. You there's no change in pressure. But the change in pressure in the z direction is equals to negative specific weight. Okay. That is what we are looking at, okay? So partial P, partial Z, okay, equals to specific weight. We can actually now change it into the uh, derivatives, okay? It's, it's possible because now we're just analyzing in one variable, which is the Z variable and yeah, P. Okay, now, quite interesting, okay? Let's look at it for one minute and let's have to think about that, okay? The, the change in the Z axis, okay, is, is changes but the, the change in the P is the opposite of that due to the minus sign. That's why negative is important. Oh, sorry, the minus sign is important. So, you know, it all starts out with the derivation, okay? We must always get the derivation correct, which in this case, we have it over here. So, if I start with a point on the liquid over here and I move up in the Z direction, so I'm moving positive, right? Positive Z. Z is increasing, okay? The pressure decreases. That means as I move up, the pressure decreases. Well, that makes sense because, um, you know, if we move up the liquid, the pressure decreases. Conversely, if we move down the liquid, the pressure increases. So this equation tells us a lot, and it's a fundamental equation in analyzing fluids at rest. Okay. So now, using some basic integration, let's separate the variables and see what we get. Okay. I would like to specify this point as z1 and the associated p1, z2 and the associated p2, pressure two. Okay. Separating variables and integrating, we got pressure one, pressure two. Okay. Uh, we got pressure one, pressure two, dp. Okay is equals to integrate z1, z2, specific weight, and dz, like so. Now, we have implemented an assumption, okay? And I hope that you bear with me. The assumption is constant 
density. Okay, another term for constant density meaning to say that the liquid is incompressible. Now, if you deal with liquids, okay, that is a fair assumption to make because you know we can't compress the liquid. However, if we're dealing with gases, okay, I will have another lesson on on uh, non-constant density. So the density is is changing. Okay, so let's be aware of that. Okay, during the integration, p two take away p one is equals to. Sorry, I forgot a minus sign over here. Okay, is minus specific weight z two take away z one. Okay. Now, I'm going to introduce a minus sign on both sides because I really want to eliminate that minus sign over there. So, P1 take away P2, just introducing a minus sign on both sides, is the specific weight Z2 take away Z1. Okay, and what is Z2 take away Z1? Well, Z2 take away Z1, we will now specify as the height, okay, between the two points that we are looking at, the two points of the liquid, so it's equal to H. Like so, and lastly, we want to rearrange P1 is equal to, okay, P2 plus specific weight times the height. Okay, now this equation is telling us that as we move from, sorry, the pressure at P1 over here, right, is equal to the pressure at P2, okay, plus the specific weight and the height. So therefore, the pressure definitely increases. So if you move from this point over here to this point over here, as you're moving deeper down in the liquid, the pressure does increase. Well, you have already expected that, okay? What I've just simply shown you is using a rigorous mathematical method to show it. And that is what we have. Now, this, there's a term for that, and I would like to say it. We say the pressure distribution is a hydrostatic distribution. Hydrostatic distribution, okay? What does it mean? Well, it simply means that the pressure varies linearly with the height or with the depth, okay? Linearly, okay, which it happens quite often. Hydrostatic distribution. Now, let's just introduce a few other terms so that we have we are get we are in the mode of fluid mechanics. Our right height is equal to okay p one take away p two specific weight. Okay, so this tells us that which is quite interesting if you want to look at it in an engineering perspective. Okay, uh, um, let's just say height is here. Okay, height is here. Okay, and I got something over here like that. Now, you're in a situation where you got a fluid like so, and you want to support a certain object over here, okay? And you got the specific weight of the liquid. This tells us that we need a certain height, okay, to support that object over there, okay? We need a certain height to support an object over there, given that we know the pressures P1 and P2, okay? P2 is over here, and P1 over here. Okay, which is important because sometimes you know they when you build hydro hydro uh, hydraulic dams, you will need to know the, the height to support an object. This height has a special term for it, which is called the pressure head. Okay, so I think that's enough for today. So what we've done, we've done that from the basic equation. Okay, we have shown analysis of the fluid at rest, acceleration equals to zero. We have derived this equation, which is what we expected as we go down, the pressure increases. This is called a hydrostatic distribution. Okay, and we can rearrange to put H as this. That is called the pressure head. There's a pressure head is that given the specific weight of the liquid to support a certain object, we need a certain height. Very important for calculations because if your, your pressure head is not correct, well, the, the object is going to fall. Okay, so there we go. Okay, yep, some, some just good fundamental uh, mathematics to show the fluid and rest analysis. Okay.